Uh, but uh, I wanted to kind of share um, uh, a couple of things that uh, I actually had the privilege of sharing last week at the conference. Uh, and uh, last week, my, my, my seminar on Saturday uh, was, was dealing with uh, trouble shouldn't last always. And it talked about uh, how to handle um, putting out fires with finesse. And so um, I really had a, a great time uh, sharing with the group that uh, was in my session. But I wanted to um, uh, kind of uh, jump on that, not necessarily from a leadership standpoint, but uh, from a, just from a mature uh, individual standpoint. Some of the things that I shared last week are also in the book for mature audiences only, which is uh, available now. Uh, get it and uh, pre-order it and um, uh, we'll be able to, you'll see all this stuff that's in there. But, but um, the, the thing that was interesting was uh, we were talking last week and I, I, I gave a few points about how to, as a leader and as a, a child of God, what we should do in order to avoid, um, you know, uh, putting out the, uh, learning how to put out a fire. Uh, one of the things that I talked about was sometimes you have to, uh, make sure that you're not escalating the situation. Uh, you know, like the old saying that you have either a bucket of sand or a bucket of, of, of gasoline. Of course, a bucket of sand is going to uh, put the fire out, but a bucket of gasoline is going to spread it. And sometimes by the way that we react or how we respond uh, to a situation uh, actually can make it better or make it worse. And one of the things I pointed out that you have to learn how to uh, respond to a situation instead of react. Reacting means that you are usually, it's, it's, a, it's a spur of the moment, it's an immediate uh, snap decision, something that happens, somebody says something, somebody does something. Bless you, uh, Pastor Elkenberger, uh, good to see you. Uh, and uh, um, I, did, I didn't pronounce your name, Eichelberger. Uh, glad to see you. Um, but um, we, we think that, you know, sometimes we're reacting because of how we feel. We get emotional. We, we just jump right into a situation. And many times when we react, what we're doing is actually making the matters worse. Uh, and so you have to learn how to respond. And responding takes time. Responding uh, means you take thought and you, you take some time. You think, you pray, you sometimes even seek counsel of others to make sure that you are going to give the proper response. Even when somebody texts you something, uh, sometimes you can't always send a text back right away. Sometimes you have to give some thought, some prayer before you uh, say something uh, that makes the matter, the situation worse. The scripture in Proverbs says uh, that um, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And we have to be careful that we're not stirring up more anger just to make our point, just to make sure that we are, uh, bless you, Pastor, and so to make sure that we're not making matters worse. Uh, and I've learned that uh, the hard way uh, after 27 years of pastoring, I've learned that, you know, you can't always uh, jump right into something. Hey, Arian. And you can't always uh, just keep you know, you can't always just go with how you feel at the moment and how you're, you're just reacting to it with your emotions or how you, because sometimes you get angry, sometimes you get upset and you're trying to, okay, I'm going to jump right back at them because I got to get my point across. But sometimes you got to make sure you uh, choose your words carefully. I, I said it in the conference and I said it on here uh, that, you know, not only do your words have power, but your words also have consequences. And you can't let somebody uh, make you or push you into saying something that uh, has a longer term consequences uh, than they really should. Sometimes you could put out a fire by simply uh, praying about it and also uh, simply giving a simple word and moving on. Uh, and everything doesn't have to be addressed at that moment. Now, there's some things that and we got into a big um, discussion and uh, it was a lot of fun when we were, I was talking about some of the instances that have happened over the years. And some things have happened even recently that where, you know, you got, you know, people that are, have different positions in church and how they're talking to people or how they're affecting people, uh, how they're responding and how they're behaving sometimes can get the best of uh, other staff members, members of the church. And so sometimes you have to, you know, make sure that you 
uh, address the situation in the right time in the right manner. I talked to them about the definition of being meek. Uh, meek is not, is not weak. Most of the time when we hear meekness, we think about weakness, but actually meekness means you're strong. It means you know how to, you get mad for the right reason, and the right reasons, uh, to the right measure, and, and with, the, with, with, with the right amount of anger. In other words, you know, you can go somebody that's, uh, that's always on 10, you know, to go from zero to 10 like that. And so there has to be a time where you learn how to uh, necessarily, uh, look, I, I get mad for the right reason, with the right measure, and, for, and on the right occasion. In other words, I'm not, I'm not jumping and getting mad over little nothing, but I'm getting mad and I have the right response and I know how to, to be uh, self-controlled. Uh, a lot of us, you know, lack self-control, but you have to have that middle ground where you know how to respond. So there is a difference between responding and reacting. And as I said earlier, sometimes you got to make sure that you don't let somebody else push you, somebody that's reacting, push you into reacting with them. Uh, a lot of times we have folks around us that, that may want to, uh, we need to fire this person right away. Well, you know, um, but those of us that are saved, those of us that are children of God have to learn how to, you know, take our time. We can't just fire folks right away because you never know. Uh, you fire one person and now the next thing you know, that's about five people that are leaving your ministry. That are five people that are going to be affected. So you have to learn how uh, to to handle the situation in the right way. So you can't allow people to get you uh, worked up. But also, you have to make sure that you are, one of the things I said last week was that you got to make sure you're a firefighter instead of a fire starter. What, that, what I mean by that is, make sure that you're somebody that's, learn, that's coming to put out the fire and not somebody that's coming uh, to stir it up. Uh, and don't have people around you that are fire starters. I, I tell my staff a lot of times, I said, look, I don't need people make, giving me more, you know, more problems to solve. I have enough on my plate. I don't need you bringing me another emergency. I, I need folks around me, and you have to, I'm thank God that I have people around me that can put fires out for me, and that way I don't have to deal with every single thing all the time. But you have to, as a mature saint, yeah, how you react as you mature in God will change. You got you can't be the same way if you. That, this is one of the signs of maturity is how you respond to uh, situations that come up in your life. Uh, when you were you know uh, new in the Lord, when you were immature, uh, you probably would fly off the handle. You probably would uh, go off on somebody. You probably would you know uh, say something uh, that was right off the off the top of your head. You weren't going to think about it. But as you mature, you learn how to, you know, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm not going to respond to this right away. I'm not going to send this text. I'm not going to return that phone call. I'm not going to engage with you. Sometimes you learn how to walk away. Uh, those of us on here that are married know that there are situations where you learn, you know, when you got to keep your mouth shut. Amen. Say, I ain't getting no thumbs up, so maybe I'm, I'm not teaching right. But, but sometimes you got to know when to keep your mouth shut. You got to know when to, uh, you know, wait a while. And then think about it. And then also you have to learn how I got to diffuse the situation. I got to make sure that I'm trying to, uh, instead of making it worse, I got to try to make sure I can tamp it down a little bit. Amen. They, uh, that way, I know you, the, the thumbs up are working. Thank God. But you have to understand that there are some things that you can do as a mature child of God, as a mature saint that are different. And it should be. And sometimes you can even pat yourself on the back when you say, you know what, if, you, if this person has said this to me, uh, five years ago, we would have had, you know, we would have had a real issue on our hands. But since now I'm growing in God, since I'm growing and I'm maturing and I'm developing, now, amen, they are able to reap the benefits of not having me go off on them. And now, I, I, now I'm not going to have these petty arguments. I'm not going to get into these these silly discussions and spats with people because I'm, I'm grown now. I don't have time. As you grow up, you don't have time for all the little mess. I told the folks in my church, yeah, a little while ago, a while back, I said, you've had your last fight. Amen. I can't hear nobody. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's any. Amen. You have had your last fist fight. Whenever that was, that was your last one. You can't be walking around here because Pastor Helen does not come into to jail to bail you out. Amen. Uh, for getting into a fist fight. You got to make sure you are able to tell yourself, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be the adult. I'm going to be the mature one here and, and, and understand that it's not worth it 
to be going back and forth with grown people. Uh, I had a thing that happened a few uh, a little while ago where I was like, you know, I said, and I was trying to tell the person, I said, look, everybody in this situation is grown, so I, we ain't got time to be going back and forth and name calling and all that stuff. We're all grown people, so we, let's let's act like adults. Let's act mature. And, and know that you have, uh, amen, you, amen, you had your last fight, amen, ain't nobody going to be fighting, you know, I'm going to look like going down to jail trying to bail you out because you got into a fist fight, amen, you, you, you're mature people of God, uh, and, and the last thing I told them, I, I, I uh, read a scripture out of 2 Timothy, uh, and it, it deals, and it's, it's a scripture that the Lord keeps bringing back to my mind over and over again, uh, as, as I was growing and as I've been growing as a pastor and a leader because I would get frustrated with people and I want people to behave, you know, as, as most pastors and leaders do, we want them to do what we want and uh, with the right attitude and the way we want it done. And, 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 but the Lord told me that in, in Timothy, when Paul was talking to him in, in his second letter, he said, you know, avoid, but foolish questions, uh, avoid. In other words, because they do gender strife. In other words, those are foolish and unlearned questions. You don't have time to deal with silly questions. You don't have time to get involved in silly discussions. I'm going to give you the exact scripture because in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 26, it says, you know, it's a, but they, they gender strife. And then he said, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, uh, but be gentle unto all, you know, patient, apt to teach. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure may grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who have taken them captive at his will. What am I saying? That the servant, the leader, the child, the mature child of God can't fight. You can't stir up more trouble. Everything ought to calm down because you come around, because you're mature. You ought to bring so a level of maturity and peace. I told them also, blessed are the peacemakers. And the peacemakers are not just people that solve conflicts between other individuals, but sometimes a peacemaker is a person that just brings the peace of God into a situation. Everywhere you go, your job ought to be better because you bring God's peace with you everywhere you go. As a child of God, you have that ability to change the atmosphere, to change the energy in a room. When you come in, there ought to be a difference. People ought not want to be cra acting crazy around you. All right? Uh, maybe, maybe. No. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Amen. The, amen. You, the, you ought to be the type of person that has is a calming influence. That uh, when people come around you, or when they are, when you come into the area, they'll always and there's something about you. I always feel better when you're here. Amen. People ought to. There, have you ever had friends that that look to you to be the the adult in the room? They always, they were always, I always feel better when you're around. That's because you're bringing God's peace with you. That's because you're bringing the mind of God. You're bringing the spirit of the Lord with you. So that's where we ought to be as mature people of God. When we start growing, God ought to be able to show, uh, you know, show himself strong in each and every one of us. And it's not going to be because you run around speaking in tongues all the time and you carry a big Bible and you got a big gigantic cross around your neck. It's going to be because of how you carry yourself and the spirit that you operate in. That's why as you mature, you're going to be the one that helps calm situations down. Projects will work better when you're involved in it. Amen. I want a few thumbs up on that. Some of y'all realize whenever you are, are in the room, things go better. You don't even have to say a whole lot. Things go smoothly, more smoothly when you're involved in it. Things work out better because you're around. That means you're bringing a level of peace and maturity into the room that helps put everybody, amen, at ease. You make everybody comfortable. That's why people are drawn to you because they like, you're just some, there's something about you that makes it, you're, you're just easy to get along with. That's the way we ought to be as mature people of God. We ought to be the kind of people that folks are saying, you know what, I like having them around. I like having her around. She's good. I like her on the team. Uh, whatever you do, call so and so. Get her, get her on the team. Get him on the team. Get him in the room. I need to have him here before we move any further in this meeting. I need to have him come in, because you're the one that's bringing that kind of you're bringing the spirit of the Lord right into the room with you. You're bringing the peace of God, and and with you everywhere you go. 
So that's what I want to encourage you to make sure that you're continuing to grow, continue to mature. Uh, this is some of the stuff that's in the book too that talks about how you react and how you respond. And it's also, it's every now and then it's good to pat yourself on the back when you know that you've grown up a little bit. When you know that you have... Have, have, have the same thing that hits you that the enemy's got to come up with a different play this time because this time when he hit me with this I was ready and I didn't respond and I didn't get out I didn't lose focus let me say that before I get off of here make sure that you don't lose focus a lot of the things that happen uh, I saw 45 yesterday pull a stunt with the, in the press conference where you know he get into this discussion with this uh, reporter and throw and make sure he take his credentials and all that mess it's all a distraction because he's he's nervous Amen. I'm not, all right. I'm sorry. That was a little political thing. But but sometimes people will do stuff that will act out and get you off your game. You can't afford to get off your game. We're in, that, we're in the fourth quarter of the year. You're gearing up right now for 2019. You don't have time to allow somebody to get you involved in some little old back and forth and, you know, and, and, and this little old petty argument. No, you don't have time. The servant of the Lord must not strive. Don't get involved in it. In meekness, with the right mentality, with the right temperament. You just learn how to just relax, just just be able to, you know what, I'm not, I'm not involved. And make sure you guard your mind and your time. I had a post up this week about allowing negativity in your mind. Make sure that you guard your mind because that's how you know, your mind has to be affected. And then, of course, what you start saying is going to, be a, uh, is, is going to have an impact. So you have to make sure you're guarding your mind. Don't allow that negativity you can't go everywhere. You can't read everything. You can't hear everything because you it gets you off your game. Understand that there are great things that God has for you, but you got to be focused. You got to be focused. You got to you got to simplify your life and focus. Don't let somebody get you involved in their mess. Guard your mind, you know, and make sure you're keeping your focus on the Lord. Amen. I'm going to close for tonight. Uh, I, I missed you all last week when I was in uh, Atlanta, but um, I'm, I was glad to be back this week and be able to share a little something with you. And I hope it blessed you tonight. If it did, please, if it did, please uh, share it with somebody else. And if you didn't catch the whole thing, please uh, watch the replay. <laughs> no, don't go. Uh, no, I'm tired. But uh, anyway, I'll be back, Lord willing, next week. Uh, actually, we are going to be having our council, but uh, in Bakersfield, uh, our, our our fall conference. But I do plan on doing a Facebook Live next week. Uh, but I, I aim at that, that David, you are absolutely right. So much of uh, the change, uh, the change that we have in our life, has to do with us changing our circle. And this is a good time right now for you to reevaluate your circle. Is this circle helping me? Is it getting me where God wants me to go? Uh, or, or are they somebody uh, that can, uh, is it somebody I need to release and let them go into another place so I can keep on going where God wants me to go? So yes, um, but anyway, next week, uh, we, we hope to be with you again. Uh, as I always say, get to somebody's church this weekend. If you can't get there in person, please go online and, uh, and, and be ministered to and support the ministry. Uh, also, please go to stevehamiltonministries.com, stevehamiltonministries.com. People are saying, Pastor, when is the book coming out? Soon, soon. The publishers have it now, and uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, but we'll be announcing that very shortly, our release date. And um, But please, get for mature audiences only. Uh, and I'm telling you, this book is, I, I just believe, I'm really proud of it. And I believe God's going to help a lot of people uh, with it. And so I uh, encourage you, get it now, get a copy for yourself, get a copy to share with somebody else uh, and let it bless you. It's coming out very, very soon. So I'm excited. And hopefully uh, some of my friends all, thank you, Sheila, some of my friends all over the country, uh, I will be coming to see you. Uh, Arian, I'd love to come to Canada too. But anyway, <laughs> but um, we thank God for each and every one of you. Love you all. I'm praying for you and I'm believing God with you. Uh, God bless you tonight and hope you had a good, uh, have a good rest of your evening and good rest of your week. God bless you. Uh, yes, there will be book signings, Nikisha. Yes, several. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.